pass me by when you pressing people don't pass me by i open my heart unto you my lord touch me now make me whole when you move don't pass me by Sing high.
you all the glory, we give you all the praise, we give you all the all, you alone deserve it, we give you all the glory, we give you all the praise, hey, all the praise, you alone, say. we give you all the glory, say.
has come to set you free. Today you will rise, you are rising again. And dry bones are coming to life. Hey, today you will rise, you are rising again. One more time, listen. Yahweh has come to set you free. Tribals are coming to life. Hey, today you will rise. You are rising again. We are rising. Rising, rising, rising. We are rising. We are rising, rising today. We are rising. We are rising, rising. We are rising. Moving to the land of me can hide miracles are happening in this place, and from today, my life will never be the same. Oh, oh miracles are happening in this place. I stand amazed in your presence. There is nothing you cannot do. I stand amazed in your presence. There is joy, peace, and hope. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you in all the earth. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you. Who's it? You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Also means your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Also means Also means your name. 
You split the sea. You move the mountains. You quench the fire for my sake. It floods around me. Winds blow for me. You calm the storms, God, for my sake. Father, you make a way. Father, you make a way. Where there's no way. Father, you make a way. So you speak the sea. You move the mountain. You press the fire. For my sake.
Ascension in your heart and have a contact with the presence of the Lord.
Praise the Lord. Lift up your right hand towards the heavens if you can. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. We call your majesty. We acknowledge with our hearts open that there is no any other God apart from you. We will never find another God and we are not searching for one. You are surrounded with majesty. You are surrounded with faithfulness. Oh God, your faithfulness touches the sky. And your greatness is wider than the sea and broader than the whole earth. You live far above the circle of the universe. And you reign with wisdom and power. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Even the lightnings, your lightnings, light up the whole world and the earth sees it and trembles. You are great. You are God slow to anger but quick to forgive. You are loving and you are caring. You are merciful and you are just. Thank you for giving us this chance that we can worship you. The only true king the one who was and is and the expected one to come. Take all the glory and be glorified. Give grace in this service that the weak are strengthened. Give grace in this service that the sick are healed. May grace be given in this service that the feeble ones are strengthened and will find a reason to walk again. This is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Powerful.
powerful. Saints, you can have your seats and God bless you. Thank you so very much, our tribe of Judah, for a very powerful spiritual spirit filled moment you have led us in worship to our king god bless you all in jesus name how many of you are happy to be in the house of the lord once again this evening wave your hands towards the heavens <laughs> glory to god my studio is on fire today here something so corrosive is happening in the studio already <laughs> Very amazing. Very amazing. It is as if they know what I'm about to share with them. They are just so excited to be here. It's the same excitement I see with those in conference rooms. Daughters and sons of major ones are so excited to be connecting. Family and friends, wherever you are, I can see you. Wave your hands. Beautiful. Welcome. Welcome to a wonderful Yet another session in the presence of the one that died and rose again. It's an honor to be invited by God to this sacred sitting in the presence of the king. Believe you me, saints, we are going to have the breaking of the bread in the very smaller details for an easy consumption, for easy chewing. You are speed to be able to capture something and you host the presence of God in the name of Jesus. I believe you had a very wonderful sessions in the morning in various church branches where you were if you at all you attended the church and if you're not whether you are connecting i'm sure you also had a very wonderful experience if none of the above you are still welcome to continue with us on this very minute and so may god of major bless you in jesus name ladies and gentlemen quickly turn your bibles with me and i want you to have your bibles and please, saints, I want you to give me a very powerful, close listening ear. And if there's something else that is either disturbing you or is, is giving you, you know, divided attention, I want to choose one. I want just you to give me a listening ear. Or probably can just have a pen next to you and they were to write so that when God has spoken to something, please immediately pen down it. You know, jot it down. Because something big is about to take place today in the name of Jesus Christ. Mark chapter number number 14 says. Mark chapter number 14. And we are reading from verse number 32. From verse number 32. Mark chapter number 14. A gospel according to Mark. The gospel according to Mark. And I'm saying once again, if we are, you are doing something, stop what you're doing and just concentrate this hour. Just dedicate it to what God is about to what God is doing and listen to what God is saying there is something so prophetic very very prophetic I want to share with you a prophetic message can you say after me a prophetic message say it loud and clear say a prophetic message this message is so prophetic in that number one it is already happening in your life Number two, some of you just came out of it. And number three, some of you are about to enter in it. So it's Mark chapter number 14. We are reading from verse number 32. Then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray there. He took Peter, James, and John with him. And he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. And then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. He went a little further and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, 
The word Abba means source. Origin. The word Abba means source or origin. Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Then he came and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptations. The spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed and spoke the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again. I don't know who is sleeping. But each time there is a visitation of God is finding you sleeping. For their eyes were heavy and they did not know what to answer him. Then he came to the third, the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? In other words, this is not time to sleep and this is not time to rest. It is enough. The hour has come, behold. The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of the sinners. Rise. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. We'll stop there. Face to face with Gethsemane, the message title of the, of the day. Face to face with Gethsemane. If you have a neighbor next to you, I want you to turn to your neighbor, say neighbor, face to face with Gethseman. Please help me to speak that to your neighbor again. Say neighbor, face to face with Gethseman. Say your own Gethseman, face to face with it. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen and brothers and sisters in the Lord, wherever you're watching me from, Listen to me and listen to me very, very attentively. Because just after this message, when I be saying a shalom out of this altar, then you will know that the presence of the king came down and that the God of major one had spoken a word. Brother, listen to me face to face with the Gethseman. It is not your first time to hear the word get some money. Or there's a song you may even have sung about get some money. Or maybe you are one day you sat under a teaching or a preaching. Or a sermon speaking of the same. But listen to me, saints. This is yet another season altogether. And I want you to understand prophets. Whenever a prophet is speaking, he either comes to announce a season or to tell you a season which is ahead of you. So, brothers and sisters, I have come to speak of a season. The season that you are in. The season that you are coming out of it already. Or the season you are about to enter in. And I've come to interpret that season for you. Because eternity has an expectation. And so, listen to me very well. Brothers and sisters, there is one as known as Gethsemane. And you are going to have face to face with your personal Gethsemane. Every believer, every man and a woman of God has his or her own Gethsemane. I have my Gethsemane and you have your own Gethsemane. One day in life, as you're aging and as you're growing, you have to enter your Gethsemane. Either whether you know it or you don't know it. But one day you are going to enter Gethsemane. If you get some money, you are not going to enter get some money. It's either get some money will enter you. But this is an avoidable season 
unavoidable experience. You cannot pray it off. You cannot pray it off. So you are going to understand me very well as I'm sharing with you, saints, wherever you watch me from. On Major on Connect, on YouTube, on wherever you, you are watching me from. Listen to me very well. Saints, life gives us two sides of experience. Life is like a coin. A coin has got two sides. The head side and the tail side. That is exactly the experiences of life. Life permits you to experience both sides of the coin. The head side and as well as the tail side of an experience. Or the tail side of a coin. What is the positive side or the head side of a coin? Ladies and gentlemen, it is not always when you spin a coin that it always gives you the head. And it is also not always the time when you spin the coin, it will give you the tail. But it can sometimes happen, you can spin the coin, it can give you the tail three times. But maybe the fourth time, it will give you the head. But it is not possible for you to spin a coin more than five times giving you the same side. That is exactly the experiences of life. Days and times will come where life situations will spin you. And you either will fall to the negative side, to the tail side. Not because you've done something wrong. Or you are in a, in a wrong state with the spirit of God or with the Father in heaven. Mm -mm. But things can happen to people. Even bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to good people. And sometimes you wonder, how much I pray, how much I follow God. Why are these bad things happening to me? Why? The more I push, the more I pray. It's the more distractions are happening to me. What wrong have I done? If you are a baby in the things of God, you will think maybe it's a, it's a church that you are in that's a problem. Or it's a preacher that's preaching to you that's a problem. Or maybe it's your Bible which has a problem. You may want to change the church. It's not the church. The changing of the church will not change anything in your life. Sometimes you may think, let me move from one location to another. Sometimes it may not even help. Because you have to understand Getsemane experience. You have to understand this, what is known as your own Getsemane. Face to face with Getsemane. What is Getsemane? But before that, are you, I, maybe you, you have understood what I said. The coin has got two sides. The head side of the coin are the positives that you have experienced in life or man can experience in life. Good things. Good life. You can name what good life is all about. Everyone else loves you. Everyone else seems to be in support with you. Everyone else follows you. But there's also another time where life begins to treat you in the opposite direction. And you wonder, the more I do good to people, is the more people do bad to me. Why do people do all this? I, if I'm going to ask you a question. What wrong did Jesus do or did to, to this guy who betrayed him? What was his name? Judas Iscariot. Tell me. All the good things his master did. And Jesus loved him so very much. By the end of the day, he betrayed him an innocent man. He betrayed an innocent man. Who brings that betrayal and the sense of an attack on an innocent person. Get a man is for everyone. So if you don't know these things brothers and sisters and you're watching there you may sometimes give up on God or sometimes you may give up on yourself or you may give up on your career. You may think God is not answering or God is not watching or God is not by your side or God is taking forever in intervening in your situation. God is not taking forever. God is God of time. Or he has put all things beautiful in his own time. Ecclesiastes chapter number 3 verse number 11. Ecclesiastes chapter number 3 verse number 11. He has made everything beautiful 
in its own time. And, and until the same, let's see, only part A. Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. Exactly the sense. He has put everything beautiful in its own time. There is a time for elevation. You're going to be elevated. And this will happen to you in the name of Jesus. So brothers and sisters, daughters and sons of my father, Major One, listen to me. Pastors, Levites, stewards, listen to me. Managers, lawyers, nurses, worshippers, listen to me. Getsemane comes for everyone. Righteous, whether you are righteous or not. Committed or not committed. It's an experience God will not allow you to escape. I'm not talking of Satan. I'm talking about God who will not allow you to jump over to escape it. The moment you escape Gethsemane, life will still catch you in front of where you go and it brings you back into the class of Gethsemane. Gethsemane is a beautiful university that produces greatness. It's a university that cooks men that will shake the world. Gethsemane is a place, is a school where greatness is built in a man. When God is about to bring greatness out of you, he will put you in a place called Getseman. That experience will wake out of you until something comes out of you. Greatness will begin to manifest. Any man that is enjoying the fruits of their labor, the fruits of, 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 their, of their commitment, their fruits, it's because one day they were in a place called Getseman. And if you are praying for the same, then this is a message you need to understand. Tomorrow you may, you, you'll be thinking of binding witchcraft or witches. Yet there is no anyone who is bewitching. It's just that you are not in the alignment with the word of God. So brothers and sisters, Jesus, after he had done speaking to the disciples on the last supper, last supper when i just done speaking to them disciples and after prophesying to peter that one among you shall deny me peter before the rooster claws you have denied me three times just after you're done speaking and breaking of the bread on the last supper the bible says he took the disciples to the place called Gethsemane. i want you to understand church the one who took their disciples to a place called Gethsemane is not satan it is Jesus himself who took disciples. He chose some of them. And he took them to get a man. Sometimes this life experience I'm speaking to you. It is God himself who picks you and puts you in a garden called get a man. It will not be. That's why I'm saying you must be very careful. To discern the spirit. Is this an attack from the enemy? Why I am Remember, the Bible says he was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. He was carried by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness, into the wilderness to be, uh, to be tempted. It is the Spirit of God that carried him into the wilderness. It was the Spirit of God that carried him, carried him there. So, having two wanted brothers and sisters, there are some problems or situations. The more you are trying to cast them out, to cast them out, is the more they are still there. And the more you are binding and chasing them away, is the more they are manifesting more stronger. And you wonder why. Then you need to change your gear. Such situations that resist prayer, they are resisting prayer, or they are resisting fasting, there is something you need to know. Some situations are getsemane in nature and the prophetic in nature. Your prayer should not be take it out. Your prayer should be let your will be done. Getsemane is a place where human will is totally submitted to the will of God. Getsemane is a place where human will is absorbed in eternal dealing the eternal decisions. This is a place where your personal will is swallowed in the will of God. 
Or Apostle Paul said, it is no longer I who is alive, but Christ lives inside of me. I am not afraid of, of being arrested, even if it means death, I am ready. This is that same place, family and friends, wherever you're watching me from. So Gethsemane is a place where human, sub, human will is submitted totally to the fullness and the will of God. When, when, want to, when God wants to see how much you love him and how much you are dedicated to him or addicted to him, he will only prove it when he pushes you in a small garden called Gethsemane. Then his will will definitely prevail. Then what is Gethsemane? Gethsemane is a garden where Jesus took the disciples there. Gethsemane, 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 whichever pronunciation you have, it's, it's not an English word. It still remains Greek the way it is. Gethsemane is not an English. There has never been found a one single word to define or to, to take to be a substitute of that term. In etymology, English did not find a proper word to borrow or to, to put there. So, Getseman is a Greek word which simply means an oil presser. An oil presser. An oil presser. Getseman, an oil presser. Oil presser. A machine that crushes the oils. Olives to produce oil. is known as Getseman. So, there was a garden in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is, on, is built on a hill, Mount Zion. And as you are coming from this side, you are going down the valley. The valley is known as Kidron Valley. And you go up. This is Jerusalem or Zion. So or you, you, you go down from Zion's hill, which is Jerusalem. You go to Kidron Valley and you go up to Mount Olives. So Jesus was this side of the Mount Olives. And he went into the Kidon Valley. There there was a garden. That garden was very important. And please listen to me. The significance of these things I will tell you right now. And please you must, you must listen to me very well. I'm, I'm very happy the way you are listening. Very, very happy. What is sense? You know a Kidon Valley? A Kidron Valley was very essential in the Bible days in that. You know, this is Jerusalem built on top of the hill. The city built on a hill, Mount Zion. Then there is a valley who is known as Kidron Valley. This valley was very important for one reason. Listen to me. Whenever the children of Israel are going to Jerusalem for sacrifices, for ceremonial activities there, Pascha, Pentecost, name them. They used to go with a lot of animals for sacrifice. So as they are slaughtering sheep in thousands, 15,000, 25,000 per day, the blood was too much. So the blood of the animal sacrifice was going into the Kidron Valley. So the Kidron Valley washes away the blood to clean the blood for sacrifice. So in other words, it was a valley that was there to drink the blood from animal sacrifice. And this was happening time and again. That's why that place became so significant. And it was just when you pass the, the olive garden or the Gethsemane garden and you enter valley. And that is the valley. So almost this garden was actually in Kidron Valley. The Gethsemane was in, in Kidron Valley. So church, Jesus goes with the disciples to Olive Garden. To the Garden of Gethsemane. Which is just next to the Kidron Valley. These things were not happening just for a matter of happening. These are prophetic details the church must understand. He deliberately, consciously walked into that place for a reason. That place, the oil press, the Gethsemane, was a garden, a very small garden, 1,200 square meters, to be precise. 1,200 square meters. That was the size of the garden of the day. 
the Gethsemane Garden. Jesus enters there. Oil of press. The reason why it's called an oil of press is because when they planted olives in the days, in the ancient, they also built a machine in the same garden. They built the first machine. That machine was known as Gethsemane. Gethsemane is an oil presser. So they built it in the garden because transportation was an issue. They would not be harvesting the olives and carrying them a long distance. They would just build a machine right there, a factory, right there in the garden. So they would just harvest here and, you see, put in the machine, the, the, the factory, and process to produce oils. So for labor, it was, labor, labor was reduced, and so for convenience as well. You're with me? Exactly. Jesus goes into that garden of Gethsemane called an oil presser. And there he cried. There, the Bible says, the moment he entered in that place, in that space, he had entered a certain dimension, a dimension that Apostle Peter could not understand. James could not understand. This other guy could not understand. The moment Jesus entered Gethsemane, the Bible says his heart was broken. Surprisingly, Apostle Peter is no more. James is okay. John is also okay. This one has entered an atmosphere. Sir, it can happen. You may see me crying here and you are happy. You may never know what I'm going through. Your season and my season are not the same. Jesus entered a season, a space of crashing. He entered Gethsemane, a space so prophetic for him. And he could not keep it to himself. He had to say, Peter, my heart is troubled. James, my heart is troubled. This is a place, saints, where you can't keep pain to yourself any longer, but you have to look to, for someone to share the pain. Peter, my life is broken. My heart is confused. I am in pain. He said, I am broken in my inner, in my inner heart. To an extent, I can die. Brothers and sisters, this was a heavy issue on Jesus. He says, Peter, do you know death? I am broken to a place of death. In other words, if it was in the modern day language, you can say, this is a place where you say, I don't know the reason of living. Why, why, is, it, why, why is life life then? I don't know the reason why I'm still alive. I just want to be taken. Let God just take me. Why am I still alive? I understand this is exact place. Where Jesus entered, it's a space you enter. It's an environment you enter. Where things begin to squeeze you. Life begins to squeeze you. You try to do business, you are squeezed. You borrow money to the bank, you are squeezed. You try to do school, you are squeezed. You try to get married, you are squeezed. Love squeezes you into nothing. Jesus Christ was there. And surprisingly, these guys that went with them, with him, because they did not know what's happening, they were not just squeezed with him. They were okay. They were so normal. Imagine they were sleeping. And Jesus is cross. Maybe I'm speaking to someone and you're watching me. Daughter and son of Major, you are there. Listen to me. Listen to me very well. Get some money. It's not for forever. Master is why it's called an experience. Experience is the best trainer. It's not for every, it's not for forever. It's for a, a season. It's just for, it's momentarily. It's just for a very, 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 very short time. But many people lose the glory of God here because pain makes them lose focus and can make decisions that can demand or be costly to them tomorrow. You're so quiet. I, I'm not hearing anyone. If, you're not even coughing. Can someone cough somewhere else? I, I want to hear the feedbacks. It's Gethsemane. It's face to face with Gethsemane. Peter is sleeping. James is sleeping. Friends that could help you, they are sleeping. 
You try to make call to them, they are not picking. You try to, to write them emails, they are not responding. You try to go, to, you follow them, they are never there. They are not at home. Get a man an experience of pain. This is a place, ladies and gentlemen, where the will of man is totally sold out to the will of God. Eternity was waiting for Jesus to make a confession that let your will be done and not mine. That happens in a place called Gethsemane. This is a place you say, oh God, oh God, my education has failed. Connections have failed. Intervene. Let your will be done. Be it unto me according to your will, oh God. Gethsemane is a place of brokenness. Sir, this is a place where Yahweh puts you there and he begins to break you into pieces. He begins to burn your bit. He takes all the parts out and begins to remake you. Remake you. He begins to build you again. Make shaping, reshaping you again. It's in Gethsemane. In Gethsemane, you may sometimes feel you are dying and there is no hope. That feeling comes that I'm, I'm finished. I am so finished. Shame, pain, torture, name it, comes in Gethsemane experience. And you, you meet face to face with Gethsemane. This is a place where friends of help are never there. The so-called destiny helpers are never there. Church, listen to me. An oil press. In most days, if they are to produce oil, oil for different usage to use it for lamps for light cooking for skin name it whatever use for oil especially olive oil they have to put in a machine for example this should be the machine and you put olives here and you press them so the more the pressure the more the pressure on top of the olives is the more the beauty of the oil that comes or they'll put grapes. As they're pressing them, the harder they're pressing, or the more the pressure, the quality, the better quality of the grape juice that comes out. So if you, it's a poor quality, they'll say, you reduced pressure. There was no enough pressure. That's why it, it, it's not as, it's not of good quality. You should have exerted enough or too much pressure. To produce a better juice. So companies could compete. For the amount of force of pressing. That is exactly a place where Jesus Christ went. And in picture he had you and he had me. You and me were so far from redemption. But to catch you from there and to bring you close, he had to enter an oil press. And there was a need for a big machine to press him more than he can be pressed to redeem justice half. When he says you are bought by a press, that is not a joke. That bastard Satan cannot play around with you anymore. He gets so surprised in heaven. If Satan is playing around with your business and he's prevailing, yet he never bought you. Jesus paid a bigger price. Church, he was pressed and he was oppressed. He says, I am even about to die. I am so stressed. He cried. He went to the Father. In, in, he cried, oh God, take this pain out of me. If it was intercession of the day, he was clapping hands. Take this pain. In the name of Jesus, pain out, pain out. The more he's saying pain out, pain is coming. He's coming. He's, he's, he's pressed, oppressed. Ah, he comes up from there. He goes to Peter. Peter, wake up. I'm failing to push this on myself. Stand with me just for one hour. James, wake up. John, wake up. Stand with me. I am oppressed. I am oppressed. The guy went back to the Lord. The Bible says, as he was coming back, he found the guys were sleeping. One time sleeping. Second time sleeping. Third time sleeping. These men were just sleeping in other ways. Your, your oppression is not our oppression. Your season is not our season. Ah! Jesus prayed to an extent the sweat of his, 
the drops of his sweat turned into blood. He was heavy, troubled, heavy, distressed, heavy, tortured. I am speaking to someone. You are so suicidal right now. You are saying, Uncle Hara, I don't see reason for living. I don't see reason to stay with this. I, 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 am, I am done. I am finished. You are not finished. You have just come to a place where your destiny is being redefined. This machine, at the end of the day, it has been set to reshape the direction of your life. You will come out not as you thought you enter. Jesus is with you. God is with you. God will not allow you to enter in a place where he will not protect you enough. God can never take you to a place where he will not supervise you. He will never take you to a place where he will let you down. No temptation will come greater than that which your faith cannot handle. It will never happen. He died for you and he will never lose you. He will never lose you. Get a man is just an experience. And this experience cannot be escaped. Prayer can never remove it. Not even fasting. If you think so, go and ask Job. Job, the Bible says he was a righteous man. The Bible declares he was an upright man in the eyes of God. Are you telling me he was not praying? The man of God was in prayer. But the more he was praying, his more children were dying. The more he was praying, businesses were being taken. The more he was praying, banks were repossessing and possessing things. And the guy became as poor as nothing. Not only that, even his health was affected. In the midst of corrosive prayers, this happened to him. In the midst of acidic prayers, this happened to him. You know, when you, when you go into some disciplines of study, there's what is known as metaphysics. In metaphysics, when you go deeper into study of metaphysics, there's a discussion there that the, you discuss the existence of deity, the existence of divinity. That does really God exist? If God exists, why does he then allow people to go through bad situations? Why does he allow things to people to go through situations of such? To those of study philosophy, this is the whole study there. The whole study there. And some people go out so confused. But brothers and sisters, this is the good news. Many can be the affliction of the righteous, but finish it. The Lord shall deliver them. Exactly. Shall deliver him from them all. Weeping may endure for a night, taught me sense. But joy cometh in the morning. This is your portion in the name of Jesus. So family and friends, what is a reason for that? Before that location, I've told you the location that was in the Kidron Valley. And the Kidron Valley, the essential part of it was that it was sweeping the blood. That was to tell you and me today that Jesus, the moment you entered in the valley, the Kidron Valley, or in the, in the garden, he went to a place where he said, my blood is a blood for sacrifice. My blood is a blood for sacrifice. I am the lamb that he was slain before the foundations of the world. My blood, this blood of bulls and goats and animal sacrifice that was taking place here, came to picture the reality which I am the one. So he came to speak to that blood, that you blood of bulls, you blood of gods, you are come to speak is over. From now onwards, it will be my blood that will speak for the church. Better things than the blood of ever. So he came to sweep away that blood and to declare himself the sacrifice. The central figure sacrifice for our salvation. Isn't this beautiful? Very powerful. And number two, what you need to know about location. This Gethsemane was at the lowest of the day, of the place, in terms of geographical location, because this side, Mount of Olives, this side, Mount Zion, 
So it was in between the middle here. So it was the lowest. So when Jesus went to the lowest part, it simply meant he went, he was in the lowest part of his life. When I'm saying, Uncle Jay, I am at my lowest. It means I understand your language. That you are broken, you are at your lowest. You are at a place where you, are, you can give up, you have given up, you have no strength. Life doesn't make sense to you anymore. Church doesn't make sense anymore. Watching on a prophetic channel doesn't make sense anymore. You are at your lowest. It means you're trying to tell me spiritually, Uncle Hava, I am in Gethsemane. But this is the good news. You will come down from Gethsemane, from the lowest to the highest. God will take you from the lowest to the highest. How do I know this? The Bible says, where men shall say, there is a casting down. You shall say, there is a lifting up. Where people say there's a casting down, you shall say there is a lifting up. In Job 14, verse number 7, the Bible says, for there is hope for a tree that is cut down, that one day it will sprout again. Rejoice not, my enemies, that today it seems I have fallen down. I will rise up again. Though I may walk in the darkness, but the Lord shall be my light. David said, the Lord is my light and he is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid of? Enemies can surround me in order to eat my flesh, but they shall stumble and fall. War can broke out against me. But in this I shall be confident. For one thing I have desired of the Lord. And that which I seek is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life. Where I can behold his beauty and inquire of his knowledge in his temple. Shout hallelujah. This is your portion in the name of Jesus. This is your portion. The Lord is shifting you from Gethsemane. Some gave up on you thinking you are finished. You are not finished. You are just starting a new journey. This journey is going somewhere far where no one else can understand. No one else can understand. Ladies and gentlemen, very, very powerful. If you see a man in Gethsemane, you better stand with that man in that Gethsemane. It's an opportunity God shall give to you to stand with a man who has a Gethsemane or is going through a Gethsemane experience. If you see a brother going through pain, stand with that brother. Tomorrow it may be you. Or when he's out of that situation, he will hold you by hand. He will hold you by hand. Remember, Gethsemane is a temporary experience. It is not coming to you to stay. It will never take residence. It will not come to be permanent there. Uh -uh. It does not announce permanency. It only comes to announce a season for a reason. And the reason for a season is for a short period of time. But the moment you come out of Ketzman, the quality and the quantity of a man that you are is such that you have never existed on earth before. You shall be like an arrow from the hands of a hunter. You will go far and you will do greater things. In the name of Jesus, shout a powerful amen. In the crashing, in the pressy, you are making no wine. In the soul, I, you see, in the pressing, in the crushing, God, you're making a new wine. Man of God, listen to me. Wine is a figure, is a metaphor of the anointing. Wine, grip, is a figure of power, authority, and anointing. The more anointing you want, or the grace that you need, and if you want to operate in a higher dimension of the oil of God, and if you are demanding new oil of God to flow from within your spirit, then you cannot escape. You cannot abort the process of Gethsemane. It's a place where God is organizing, producing, manufacturing new oil from within your spirit. The essence of God will begin to manifest from your heart. God has a reason for you. New oil for new level 
is coming in the name in the name of Jesus. New oil for new level is coming in the name of Jesus. There's a special oil, special grace, special grace. I have always said to Jesus Nation Church, all that this church is going through, and all that major one and prophetess Mary are passing through, being squeezed, oppressed, you can name it. In the realms eternal, there's a function, there's something that's being produced. New oil, new wine, new understanding, new wisdom, new revelation, new strength, new power is being generated from the same oppression system of Caesar. A people that used to know me, John, some seven years ago, I can challenge you, he is no longer the same man that you know today. It doesn't matter how close you may have been with him. He's not the same man that you know today. He can never be the same man. She cannot be the same woman after going through all that she went through. There is something new in her that you never know about. Time will come, it will manifest. You wonder, where was this new oil coming from? Where is this new oil coming from? What about this new dimension? It's because one day they were in a machine and they were oppressed. To an extent, other people said they are finished and they are dead. But in the realms of God eternal, there was a process of God in trying to, to make new oil for new level. New oil for a church that is coming. New oil for victories that are here. Wait a minute. What about what you're going through also? Daughter and son of major one. Never ever think that God has forgotten you never think Jehovah has left you. He has never forgotten you. He has never taken you aside. You are still in his books and he watches over you night and day as he watches over Jerusalem. God is with you. What you're going through now is an experience you cannot avoid. So what must you do? All you need to say is, Oh God, let not my will, but your will be done. Do not let my troubles cause me to forget you. Do not let my pain forget you. Do not let my sorrows make me drift away from the path of integrity. Do not let, oh God, the torture, the experiences I'm having, don't let these things swallow me and forget all the good things that you have done in my life. Oh God, May I still see good things you've done in my life, yet in my pains. So listen to me. Shantek, Meshach, and Abednego were in the furnace of fire. Do you understand me? The men prayed not to be taken there, but they said, even if our God does not deliver us from the fire, we cannot worship this thing. Yet, as I'm speaking to right now, they were really taken, taken, and they were put in the furnace. Maybe you have also been taken. And as I'm speaking to them, Right now, you are also in the furnace. Listen to me. There is a covenant of a fourth man. He does not show up whilst they are still discussing. He shows up when they have taken you and they are throwing you into the furnace. The fourth man shows up. In these troubles, you are not alone. The fourth man is with you. Receive grace in the name of Jesus. So whether you are an officer, a preacher, a student, a father, a mother, a wife, a husband, a child, and you are going through a certain experience in your career, in your in your different endeavors. Listen to me. God is with you. He will never let you down. He does not disappoint. It's a matter of time. You will smile again. Stand up on your feet. In the crashes. In the presence, you are making you are in the soil.
in Jesus' name. Put your hands together for the Lord wants us to stand in there. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me and listen to me very well. The garden size, the area, the square meters that Jesus Christ entered was 1,200 1, square meters, a size of a garden. Yours may not be 1,200. The square meters of your garden may be different. It does not still mean that you will not come out of it. You will still come out of it. In the name of Jesus. You will sing a new song. It will be like a dream when eternity has intervened. Woman, you will sing a new song. I know you are broken and you are crushed. You have no answer and you had no answer. And you could not interpret what was happening in, into your life. But maybe now via this prophetic channel message we have or today this evening, God has just given you the interpretation that you are in Gethsemane. This is the exact place where friends of help are never there. A people you can never think. People that you never thought they would sleep on you, they sleep sleep and you wonder you mean my uncle my uncle can sleep you mean my cousin my one wife can sleep in this situation you mean my boyfriend can sleep you mean he can sleep you mean he can't even come to my stand to my help you mean he can sleep in my pain like this it tells you a story it means god wants you to shoulder the cross the burden carry it He's going to give you the grace. When Jesus found out that Peter, James, and John cannot help him, he further went on to cry to the Lord. Remember, the Bible says, and he went a little further. A little further. Take a step out from these people that cannot stand with you. And meet God and pray to Yeshua HaMashiach. He will answer you. So, the size of your getsemane is not the size of my getsemane. The getsemane of major one is not the getsemane of prophet Harold. If I can take you and put, if you take me and you put me in the getsemane of major one, I may not survive. The square meters of his getsemane are might be bigger than, than mine. That's why I just have to be the associate. Let major one be major one. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? So your friend's getsman is not your getsman. Each one, we have got different sizes of our territories to conquer. Wilderness is also called wilderness. Deserts. Experiences. No one has walked a journey to greatness without the scars. If you take our jackets out, you will see a lot of scars everywhere. The number of the scars is the number of the stars in life. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, stand firm. Ketiman is not for forever. It's just an experience. Momentality, a moment experience. Momentality. God of major one will take you out of it. New one will come out of you. Fresh oil will gush out of you. In the pressing, in the crushing, new wine is being made. They think you are finished. They, would not, they don't know the plan of Yeshua. Something new is coming out of it. May the Lord God be with you in the name of Jesus. I want you and me to make a prayer. Oh God, I can't stand without you. In Gethsemane, my Gethsemane, let your will be done. In the name of Jesus, help me to be strong. Help me to stand the test of my times. Oh God, as I put on the whole armor of God to withstand the evil days. Come on church, speak to the Lord to give you strength. Make this one minute prayer. Talk to the Lord. 
May God give you strength in your Getseman. May you conquer. May you stand. Yes. May you win the battles of a Getseman. Yes. May your trials yes. produce greatness. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. You will not die in the wilderness. Yes. You will not die in deserts. Yes. You will not die in Getseman. Yes. It's an experience yes. to produce greatness yes. out of your spirit. Yes. Out of your heart. Yes. You are going far. Oh, you yes. do great things. Yes. You are called for greatness. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Clap your hands and make your prayer to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Irakuska Paradia, Prea Kaya Mando, Esotala Paradia Hasso, Irlando Sofia Maradia Hanta, Irakuska Parade, Elonda Sofia Maradia, Elos Kahasso, Talk to the Lord, Uska Parato, Messian, Prea to the Lord, Irakata, the Lord, give you strength, Yalando Sofia, Strengthen me, O God. Strengthen me, O God. Yalando Prakaya Mante, Elaska Parato, Santa Kaya Mandala de Aze, Irakuya Mante. Oh, you are out of man, you perish. Baruske, Irakuya Mante. But when a man has been strengthened day by day, in the name of Jesus, strength for God. Strength for God. In the name of Jesus, strength for God. Ira kuska parate, make a prayer, make a prayer. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. The Lord is with you. God is with you. Emmanuel, the Lord is with you. You are defender. You are guider. You are protector. You are teacher. God is with you. One more minute, one more minute. Talk to the Lord. Just one more minute. Lord, help me. Lord, strengthen me. Let new wine for new level. Come out of me. In the name of Jesus. New wine for new level. Out of me. when it's coming. Be 
this is what makes pain more painful because it always catches you by surprise the Bible says we are all like like a fish that is caught up in a net in an aware seasons of such come in life you need to understand it's not because you're a sinner or you sinned against God it's a season it's a moment you can't pray it off you can't fast it off it can't happen it can't it's a moment we learn God beautifully every man of God in the Bible had his own wilderness in the Old Testament it was called wilderness in the new dispensation it's called Gethsemane but they're speaking the same language every man had a wilderness John the baptizer had a wilderness John for 30 years he died in the age of 31 the Baptist he only saved for 6 months John the Baptist he only saved for 6 to 7 months his mission why he was born was for him to be on the pulpit for only 6 months 30 years of preparation in the wilderness growing and being trained just to do ministry effectively six months jesus died at the age of 33 30 years he had not started the ministry what was he doing preparation being in the wilderness being in getseman to do ministry successfully in three years very important so it's not a place where you're being judged because of your past we are not talking your past here we're not speaking about your past. If God was to judge us based or to treat us based on how our sins deserves, we wouldn't be here by now. But his love and his mercy endure forever. Never give up on yourself. Try him again and do it again. This time around, this pressing, this crushing has an intention or a purpose of producing new wine and new oil out of you for a new ranking and for a new level. To him who has an ear, let him hear. Don't give up. Rejoice again. Come on, clap hands for Jesus and give him thanks. Powerful. Very powerful. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. Thank you for loving the church. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving her. Thank you for loving him. Thank you for loving us all. Thank you for new strength. Thank you for the prophecy. Some of us are in Gethsemane. Some are just coming out of this Gethsemane. Some just entered. But let your hand prevail. Because Gethsemane is not a place to die. It's a place to be equipped, cooked, to be made into that which you want us to be. Victory is our portion. Thank you, Father, for the answered prayer. So we say, so we after me, everlasting Father, thank you for strengthening me again. In Jesus' name. Can I hear a good amen? Glory! Powerful. Congratulations. Congratulations. Have your seats. And praise be to the name of the Lord. Wonderful. Wonderful. Very, very wonderful. Very powerful. Very, very powerful. I was in prayer last night for you and for this day. And the Lord gave me this.
Very big <laughs> Very big Powerful praise God Salemon, immediately after I give you the prophetic announcement We're going to go back to that song I have a very big God He will see me through in my gate, man Praise God <laughs> Glory to God Ladies and gentlemen let me give you prophetic announcements for the day. Very important. And please, I want you to follow these announcements because they will define a change of seasons and times. Number one is that there is an official change of time to start our service and when to close our services. From now onwards. And this is official from the office of the President, Prophet Shepard Bushid, Major One. We'll be starting our services. 7.30 Central African time. Central African time. Major one will be finishing or will be finishing latest 10.30 Central African time. Then we are done. That is the latest. If we happen to go to 11, maybe the dimensions of other dimensions or when the Holy Spirit chooses to interrupt us other ways. But official service will be finishing at 10.30. So please take notice of that. It's very critical. And so number two. On the 23rd of Feb, we have a very powerful celebration. We'll be celebrating the birthday of Prophet Dr. Shepard Bushiri Major One. The great man of God was born on the 20th of February. But celebrations will take place on the 23rd. 20th remains the day that the major one was born. But 23rd is a choice beautiful day for the celebrations. So saints all over the world, your best wishes, your prayer, and your goodwill towards our father, major one, then that is a season and they are needed. And so take notice, we'll be celebrating on the 23rd of Feb this month. The same 23rd to 26th we have face-to-face -face IVP. Face-to-face -face IVP. Generations are coming this side to have an encounter with the God of Major One face-to-face. -face. This is not online. It's IVP face-to-face. One-on-one with Major One is going to happen on the 23rd, the same day of celebrations. We'll start together celebrating with the IVPs until the 26th. Please take also notice of that. You can join and please, registrations are underway. Make sure you're part and parcel of this powerful thing that God is doing. Last one we have on the 24th. Ironman Conference. This is an international Ironman Conference. A very powerful one. Preparations are underway. If I'm going to tell you how we are preparing for this, this side of the divide, you will be shocked. Presidents are coming to be in attendance. Great people from all over the world are flying down to Malawi for Iron Man. Men, wherever you are, we cannot miss this. This is a service or a sermon or a conference you cannot afford to miss. Trust in God for miracles that you find your way to be here for Iron Man conference if you're a man. God bless you, saints. And now it's giving time. Giving your tithe, your seeds, and your offerings, this is that moment you are going to give, and we are going to give to God. And as you give, God will bless you. You go to JesusNation.app, and you're going to give your offering, your tithe, and your seeds. Our giving in this season is directed to charity. We are touching the poor. We are touching the needy. Our Father Major One has embarked on a very great um, journey of touching the needy in this country. You have seen it now and again. Even just after we say a shalom, I'll be giving to you um, the video. You should see where Major One was today and what Major One was doing today and what our Father is doing. Very powerful sense. Lots of people are being saved. The vision of the Jesus Nation Church is really being taken care of very well. And Major One has set a very powerful precedence. A beautiful example for this. And so we
as a church and as followers we need to take part in blessing and touching at least one family by donating so you go to genusnation.app for your donations it's called actually the circle of faith so as you donate you have joined the circle of faith so now stand up let me pray for you even as you're giving your seed your tithe and your donations towards who direct all your giving of the day to charity we'll be meeting tomorrow 7 30 for diplomatic service central african time this same altar i pray for you in the name of jesus that as you give you give away all your problems may god see your heart and touch you your donations as is touching the needy the poor may the lord also remember your family and your family members in the name of jesus as a priest on duty i bless you with the blessings of the lord in jesus name we pray amen powerful sense having said that we have come to the very last note of our today's powerful sunday serv evening service we'll be enjoying the dancing with uh, brother lay and tribe of judah as we're dancing a shalom song god bless you from this side you are with me uncle Harold the associate of prophet shepherd bushiri major one till i come back on your way let's dance together for the lord i have a big god as the song is finishing that is our shalom Welcome to Ncheu, a town located in the central region of Malawi, an administrative capital of the district known for its produce, including Irish potatoes. <laughs> Prophet Shepherd Bushiri has for so long now been on a journey of reaching out to communities around the world. Remarkably, at the beginning of the year 2024, he introduced a new life-changing initiative called Circle of Faith. Uh, this is amazing to be here, to see that the people of this area, as you can see, all this sitting down here and they came here as early as six in the morning they'll be waiting here for us to come and provide this aid and uh, this is just the one area that we're doing this is where we uh here for now and tomorrow be another place will be every single day be doing this donation uh this is uh, a demonstration what we're doing right here we need to do this you know, we cannot be sending people to do this. We have to do ourselves. We have to do ourselves. 
and nobody can do it better than you can do it yourself so everywhere else you are just know this that uh, there is so much power not just in prayer but when you touch other people as you support other people there is power in giving power power not just when you pray but as you give this is what god wants god wants us to show love my wife and i will be donating eight million dollars worth of food items as there is a serious hunger due to the cyclone of last year as well as the drought currently happening in malawi right now so you can also join us and support and do what we're doing and touch lives and we believe after touching lives when we bow down and they say we are praying god will hear our prayer the circle of faith remains unique as it appeals to all followers and disciples of Prophet Shepherd Bushiri to emulate him in responding to disasters and serving struggling homes. With a population of over 24,500, Cheu has been hit with a food shortage from a disaster of the past year. Prophet Shepherd Bushiri is here for both disaster relief and humanitarian response. The man of God is seen to provide the immediate response and early recovery. The first and most important form of relief in such a period is to immediately rush to the affected areas following a disaster and bless them with provision of basic needs, food, water, clothes, and shelter to those most seriously impacted. Our work is done here. Moving on to the next town, the affected areas and seriously most impacted are waiting for Prophet Shepherd Bushiri. This is the Circle of Faith in Ancheiru. Prophet Shepherd Bushiri. Only on Prophetic Channel. Thank you for watching this program, and we hope you were inspired. Tune in next time for more in depth revelations from God through Prophet Shepherd Bushiri. Only on Prophetic Channel. Thank you for watching this program, and we hope you were inspired.